Hello, my name is Lorna Dawson and I'm going to talk to you about soil. Where do you think soils come from and what do you think they're made of? What do you get if you take a lorry load of different amounts of sand, silt and clay, place it on the side of a hill or a valley, add some worms, dead leaves, seeds, fungi and a bit of bacteria and add some wild, windy, rainy Scottish weather and leave it for 10,000 years. <laughs> what is it made of? It's made of minerals, which are bits of rock, sand, silt or clay. They're all found beneath the soil in different places and are made of different minerals and they affect what the soil looks and feels like. A soil with a lot of sand will be crumbly and it'll dry out very quickly. While a soil that has lots of clay will be sticky when it gets wet and it holds on to the water. They will be living, decomposing and dead organisms which will build up and break down at different rates depending on the weather. There'll be water and the water will come from rain or from the groundwater table and that will create different conditions for different types of organisms to break down that material in the soil and to weather the rock to create the nutrients for different plants to grow. The climate is a main factor of soil formation and will affect how quickly the soil is formed and also affect what kind of things that can live in the soil. For example, in warm, humid weather, that will help dead things to rot more quickly. If you think how quickly a carton of milk goes off in the summer compared to in the winter, and also if it rains a lot, the soil will come waterlogged and it might even get washed away. In a very mild climate, for example, it would take about 500 years for a centimetre of soil to form, while if it's wet in tropical areas, it can take 200 years for the same amount of soil to form. But to accumulate enough substrate in soils to make it fertile could take 3,000 to 10,000 years. Yes, a very long time. And the length of time that a soil has been forming will affect what it looks like and how much the depth of that soil is. So these factors all create different types of soils to be found in different places. Now we know what makes soil look, smell and feel like soil, how do we find these different types of soil? How do we know which different soils they are? Well, what we do is we can look carefully at the different coloured layers of soil. These layers are called horizons and they give us clues to help us as soil scientists find out what type of soil it is. In the cross section on the right hand side, you can see what is called a soil profile. It's made by digging a hole in the ground and in the top soil, or called the A horizon, it's very organic because that is where the material that decay and die and break down is found, while in the B horizon there's organic and mineral components to it. While in the C horizon, which is the parent material, we find the largely inorganic, the bedrock from which the soil is formed. The first soil we're going to look at is the brown earth. These are found in relatively dry, warm climatic conditions, where the dead plants are broken down rapidly by the animals, earthworms and microbes, and they form very nutrient-rich soils. And they're generally found on flat or slightly sloping parts of the landscape. Most of our agricultural soil is brown earth, and it's often that rich brown colour and they're often under arable production and we've produced some of the world record yields of wheat and barley in these soils. The next soil is the podzol. They're found in cold, wet climatic conditions and we don't find earthworms in this soil and the dead acidic plant material doesn't break down very quickly and podzols have obvious horizons you can see the different colours of these horizons. 
There are no worms to mix them up. And they're found on forests and in heather moorlands where they are an important carbon store. Glaze are found in cold, wet climatic conditions with poor drainage, often found on fine textured clay soil. With gentle slopes and in areas of high rainfall where the water is not able to drain away very quickly. They're dull and grey in colour with some mottling in the lower horizons where they dry out and you get aerobic conditions. These glaze soils can be difficult to work with due to the poor drainage and they're more easily damaged by machinery or livestock and they're mainly used for grassland or livestock farming. For peat to be formed it needs to be in a cold wet climatic condition. There are no worms in the soil and the plant material take hundreds of years to break down. Forming on flat ground where the land is often wet it's dark in colour and made up largely of dead plant material which is not rotten down. In places, peat can be nearly two metres thick. That's nearly enough to reach the top of your classroom door. And they contain over half of Scotland's soil carbon. So yes, they are a rich carbon storage source. These soils are found in different places in our Scottish landscape. In the top left picture, we can see an arable farm with a field of potatoes growing. Here we'd found the rich brown earth soil. On the top right, we see acid heather moorland across the upland slopes. Here we would find the podzol. In the bottom left picture, we see the vast areas of peatland, hosting the deep organic rich peat. And on the bottom right, on a livestock grazing land with lush grass growing on the wetter, rich, clay soils. One thing you can do to learn about different features of a landscape is to produce your own farm landscape. If you take a tray, put in the soil or compost, sow some seeds to create a forest landscape. Paint some pebbles to make a river. Have an area of arable land and then in the wetter lower areas some areas of grass where the grazing cattle manage to roam and sheep on the hill slope. So you can create your own farm landscape. Now it's time to test whether you've been listening to what the different types of soils are. Here we've got a soil profile with distinct horizons of different colours. It's a very wet and cold environment, generally quite flat, heather with pine, with very low nutrition and based on hard acid rock. What kind of soil would this be? Yes, it's a podzo. Well done. The next soil we're going to look at is found in a warm, dry environment on gently sloped areas with arable crops growing and a high nutritive value with a sandy texture. What kind of soil is this? Yes, you're correct. It's a brown earth. Soil number three. These are formed in cold and wet climatic conditions, often on flat areas with poor drainage, with grass or forestry. They have low oxygen levels and are prone to waterlogging and they tend to be formed on fine textured materials such as clays and silts. What type of soil is this? Correct, it's a glay. Soil number four. These are formed on cold and very wet climatic conditions. The landscape is a bogland or a moorland and the nutrient level are low, although there's high carbon levels and they're very acidic. They're formed from decomposed plant material, mainly mosses. What type of soil is this? 
Yes, it's a peat. Well done. Thank you for listening about Facts About Soils. They produce the good food that we eat. The fresh water we drink runs through them. And the clean air that we breathe comes out of them. They produce the rich biodiversity both above and below ground and they store carbon to help mitigate against climate change. Please look after our soils. They're an important part of making our beautiful, rich, diverse Scottish landscape. <laughs>